Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I hope it's good to see me because I can't see you, but I know you're there. And I bring you God's good tidings on this Sabbath day. I'm Greg Davis, one of the pastors uh, with the privilege of serving here at Broadmoor United Methodist Church in Shreveport, Louisiana. And I want to welcome you to worship on this, the fifth Sunday after Easter. We are glad that you are turning in to hear some good news with us today. Please let us know how we can pray for you. Simply go to our church website and uh, look up my email address or Pastor Kelly Burns' email address and drop us a note. Share your concerns with us. Uh, if you don't have that kind of access, well, call the church office, please. Now, friends, normally, during the worship service, we take up an offering. It is one of the acts of worship that we conduct. But in these COVID days, you are there and we are here. And so we've had to get a little creative. We have options for you. First of all, you can text GIVE, B-U-M-C, to 877-570-3714. Second, you can visit broadmoorumc.org and press the Give button for online giving. Third option, some members are finding that direct deposit from their banks is the most effective way of uh, perpetuating their tithe and have disciplined giving. And so I invite you to call the church office to sign up for direct deposit. Ask for Reverend Terry Love. Finally, there's snail mail. You can please uh, send your uh, tithe or offering to the church at 3715 Uri Drive, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71105. And friends, whichever way you choose to participate, please understand that your gift supporting the church is an important part of your worship and Christian stewardship and that it helps to further the ministry of this great church. So, welcome, and let's begin with our call to worship. Hey guys, it's Pastor Kelly here. I sure have missed uh, seeing all of your beautiful faces. Uh, prepare your hearts and hear this call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon His name. Make his deeds known to all people. Sing to God, sing praises to the Lord. Dwell on all his wondrous works. Give praise to God's holy name. Let the hearts rejoice of all those seeking the Lord. Pursue the Lord and his strength. Seek all his face always. Remember the wondrous works he has done all his marvelous works and the justice he declared you who are the offspring of abraham his servant and the children of jacob his chosen ones thank you so much for that that's one of my favorite times of the worship service is getting to see at least one of you uh, that we haven't seen in a while so thank you to our liturgists uh, together we're going to sing as we open worship this morning. You can find it there on your bulletin, or if you have a hymnal, you can turn to page 64. We're going to sing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Casting down their golden crowns 
around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, which work and art and evermore shalt be. hide thee, though the eye of a sinful man thy glory may not see. Only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power, in love and purity. sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Will you please join me in our affirmation of faith? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. It is that time in our service uh, that we are going to focus our attention on the children in the room. So if you're a kid, I gather around. Uh, our children's director, Ms. Kristen Nelson, uh, has a message for you. Good morning, my friends. Well, if you noticed, I have bought, brought a friend with me. It's a very tired, worn-looking bear. This is football bear, and this is Laney's bear. When Laney was about three years old, Mr. Brian had to go away for training, and he was gone for a couple of months. And so this made her very sad that she couldn't be with her dad. And so Mr. Brian sent Laney football bear. He sent this to her to remind her that he loved her and that even though he couldn't be with her, that he was thinking about her. So this comfort her, comforted her and brought her peace. So over the years, when Lainey was afraid, she would uh, get football bear and love on football bear and it would make her feel better. It brought her comfort, it eased her mind, um, gave her a sense of peace and love. So this reminds me of a story in the Bible where Jesus is with his disciples, and he is telling his disciples that it is his time 
to go back to heaven to be with God. Well, the disciples get scared. They're afraid. They're worried. Jesus wants them to continue his ministry. He wants them to continue telling about God's love. He wants them to continue healing people. But the disciples are afraid that they're not going to be able to do it. They're also afraid for themselves because they're not sure if people are going to harm them because they are Jesus' followers. Well, Jesus tells them, do not be afraid. I leave you my peace, peace of mind and peace of heart. He is telling the disciples not to be afraid, that even though he's not with them physically, he will be with them in spirit, and they can be calm knowing that. They can have a calm heart and a calm mind. So this is like football bear was for Laney. I'm sure many of y'all have a stuffed animal or a blanket that brings you comfort. I know as an adult that when I feel afraid or anxious or worried, I go to my Bible. The Word of God brings me comfort. It brings, it calms my fear. So in um, John 16, 33, Jesus is telling his disciples, you can have peace. Because of me, in this world, you will have trouble. But be encouraged, because I have won the battle over the world. So Jesus is telling us we are going to have trouble. We are going to go through scary times. But we can be comforted in knowing that we have life with God forever because of what Jesus has done for us. So we can find peace and comfort in that. All right, friends, let's bow our heads and say a prayer together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your spirit that offers us comfort and peace when we are afraid. Thank you for a life promised with you forever. It's in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Amen.
Well, friends, I want to share some uh, joys and concerns uh, about our congregation with you uh, for prayers and healing. Uh, we always keep in our prayers everyone who are currently undergoing medical treatment. And in this case, we also want to keep in our prayers those who uh, aren't able to get medical treatment at this time because of all the other things. Hopefully, uh, that's going to, uh, to, to change uh, for everyone uh, very, very quickly. Please keep Phyllis uh, Gueller in your prayers uh, at this time uh, as she is recovering. And also for uh, Cherry Robinson. Uh, she had a procedure and is doing great. And Cherry, we miss you at the office. We love you and we can't wait to see you and Henry soon. Uh, also, friends, our, our Christian sympathy is extended to, to Bill Patton, uh, who's just such a lovely man uh, in the passing of his wife, Patsy a very courageous and faithful woman who made her transition from earth to eternity on May 8th. Please keep Bill and all his family in your prayers. Now, I wanna say congratulations to Brenda and Johnny Smith on their new grandchild, Adeline Lee, who was born at five pounds, 10 ounces, a bundle of joy. And also, I want to give a shout out to all of our seniors, because right about now is when everybody's graduating. And um, I just want to say, God bless you. God bless your families. And please know that we know that you have accomplished much, and we are proud of you. So, may the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day, we come before your throne, mindful of your majesty and your power, and humbled by the reality that you are a merciful God and that you love us. It's not because we deserve it. It's not because of anything we are able to do. It is simply because we are made in your image. That is amazing. It's amazing grace. And it saves us. And we're grateful for it. And Lord God, on this day, we hold up to you our frustrations, our impatience, our worry about the world that we live in and how things have changed and how much we want them to change back, to revert to the way that they were. But right now, we are going to give to you our worry, our concern, and exchange it for your security, for the peace that passeth all understanding. For we know that in whatever circumstances we find ourselves in, you are there and you are greater than our problems. And ultimately, there is nothing. There is nothing in all this world that can ever separate us from your love in Christ Jesus. We hold up to you, Lord, not only our own swirling emotions and those of uh, the people around us, but we also hold up to you, your church, the body of Christ. We pray that you will help us, guide us, and inspire us to continue reaching out to others in Christian love, in creative ways. Help us to see the opportunities that are there before us. Let us live beyond ourselves for you. Lord God, we lift up to you not only our own emotions and our church, but also all the leaders in our cities, our states, and our nation that are doing their best to preserve life and to help us move forward into phase one and phase two and finally phase three of all these things. Give them endurance and strength and wisdom. We hold up to you especially those who are ill, for those who are grieving in this time, 
for those who are alone and feeling the isolation, and for those whose lives have been so badly interrupted, and their ability to, to make money, to, to, to bring home a paycheck, help us, Lord, to move wisely and to get back to normal as best we can, as soon as we can. All this and so much more, we lift up to you. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us, for we need you to help us find our way. Gentle shepherd, come and reading from the Gospel of John. Peace I leave with you, says Jesus. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may your Holy Spirit come now and rest upon each of our hearts that as your word is proclaimed, it may truly speak to our lives and give us a sense of security and peace in these uncertain times. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. Now Jesus talks about peace. When do we feel peaceful? We feel peaceful peaceful when we are safe. What's interesting, though, is that Jesus is talking about peace and security in the midst of his life being taken from him. From the, it, is, it occurs during the ending of his ministry. So if we're going to experience the good life, friends, we need this kind of peace. We need this kind of security that that Jesus Christ gives. We need a security that moths and rust cannot consume and that thieves cannot break in and steal. Now, I don't remember much about middle school besides the awkwardness and algebra, but I do remember reading The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. It's the one where the guy turns into a giant cockroach. Middle school kids really love things like that but I think he was writing about government bureaucrats. Another story he wrote was called The Castle. There's a guy who's named simply K. Sounds like a man in black, doesn't it? He moves to a town to work for a guy in a castle, but every time he leaves his house to walk to the castle, the castle moves away, and he's never able to get to the castle. It's very strange, and so he tries to settle in the town, but no one accepts him or understands him 
and he is isolated, and he has no satisfying relationships with any other human beings. He has no security. He has no peace. I mean, this is where we are today. We have all of these freedoms. Isn't it great to have all of these freedoms? We have freedom from, from religion. We have freedom from morality. And on and on, all the freedoms go. But instead of feeling happier, we feel more and more alone. And these stay-at-home orders, which, thank God, is being relaxed, doesn't really help, does it? We just don't feel very free. And sometimes... Uh, during these past long weeks, for some people, they have felt not only isolated from other people, but cut off from God. It's been very difficult. Feeling secure right now, having peace, it's a challenge in times like this. And friends, in the midst of more and more governmental intrusion, the loss of our privacy in this new normal that we are stuck in, it's important to remember that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ remains a constant and a source of our security, even in an insecure world. Consider the, the setting, again, that, 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 I, that I read, this, this, this scripture, the, the disciples' world was falling in on them, as well as Jesus's. Jesus is talking to them in the upper room. He poured his out, heart out to them, and he gave them the promise of peace, security. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give. So there must be a different dimension to peace that Jesus is talking about. Don't let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. He was establishing himself as a constant, as a touchstone for their security, even in his earthly absence. Now, friends, John Wesley witnessed this exact kind of security when he was on the boat going from England to the colony of Georgia on January 25th, 1735. He was there in the hold and a rogue wave swept across the entire surface of the boat, ripped the mainsail, water was pouring into the boat, John Wesley was absolutely terrified, and he looked over out of his panic and fear to, to this group of Moravians that were over there, and, and there they were, kneeling in prayer with looks of serenity and peace upon their faces. And Wesley realized they had a source of security that he did not have. And he decided that he wanted to have that in his life. Now, it took time. But he eventually got closer to the source. He would later, in fact, walk through mobs that were threatening his life, and he would look each one of the members of the mob in the face as he walked through their midst. Because he had a deeper security. He had a deeper peace. Even in the midst of difficulties, he had peace. So it's not about the absence of stress, it is about the presence of that which is divine and supernatural in our hearts, giving us strength as we go through life. Do not let your hearts be troubled, do not let them be afraid. Friends, having a sense of security is an inside job. Pascal said many years ago, all the evils of life have fallen upon us because we will not sit alone, quietly, in a room. Now, that's pretty dire, but he certainly was on to something. It reminds me of a woman that I knew who would have her daughters do the same thing over and over and over again. Whenever they lost something in the house, she, instead of Letting them start searching for it, she would say, I want you to go in your room, and I want you to close the door, and I want you to sit down, and I want you to be quiet, and I want you to draw a deep breath, and I want you to let it out, and then I want you to begin to retrace your steps. She was calming them down. See, so often when, when, when our anxiety levels rise up, we just don't think straight. 
Security's an inside job. That's a simple thing, but it makes good sense what that woman was teaching her daughters to do. And I think it makes even more sense when we're not looking for a lost pen, but for a lost purpose. Not for a missing pair of scissors, scissors, but for a missing piece of significance in our lives. So the next time you feel yourself falling into self-pity, or the next time you feel yourself slipping into an attitude of victimhood, or just plain feeling overwhelmed by all the illness and the change and the loneliness and the difficulties and the paranoia, go out to some beautiful place or a sanctuary of God and sit there and quietly ponder such lines as, Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I am constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. Immortal, invisible, God only wise, in light, inaccessible, hid from our eyes. Majesty, the majesty of God. Be in awe, be in contact. Let that presence percolate into your soul. I mean, remember Jesus, who had so much to do in such a short time frame. Remember what he said to his disciples. He said, come away by yourselves to a lonely place and rest a while. For many were coming and going. They, they had no leisure even to eat, and they went into the boat to a lonely place by themselves. It's okay to steal away. It's okay to sit quietly in a room and be alone with your thoughts. It's okay to simply take a deep breath and experience the deep peace of God. Peace and security is an inside job. If you want to experience it, if you really want to experience security, this deep peace, then try these things, okay? First of all, be good to others. Invest yourself in your closest relationships. Invest yourself in other people. Sure, some people are going to disappoint you, but invest yourself in others. Take the time to care for them. I spoke to one of our saints this week, and I told her at the end of the conversation, I feel so much better now having talked with you because she truly cares. Make a contribution to the good of others yourself. It ends up making you feel better also. And secondly, we need to be good at what we do. I mean, have you ever really thought about that? We need to be good at what we do. If you're not happy with what you do or what you are doing in your life, be it work, be it certain habits, well, that's okay. Just let go of it. Stop doing what you're not good at. If you don't like what you're doing, change. What about this? Be good to yourself. In other words, take care of yourself physically, emotionally, financially. Some of you may be thinking it's impossible to experience this, to, to, to be good in, in, in these ways. So often we just walk around with a negative self-image. And we forget that we are made in the image of God. We forget that God deeply loves us. We've done nothing to deserve it, but it's true. We can be good to ourselves. God wants us to be good to ourselves. I'm not talking about self-centered ways. I'm talking about truly affirming whose we are. We can change. We can change even when we have difficult life situations. There was a, a man who was speaking on anger and overcoming anger, and, and at the conclusion of it, uh, uh, his talk, a, a man who was about 80 years old came up to him and said, I used to be one of those angry people, but I changed. And the speaker looked at me and he said, well, that's very impressive. How were you able to change? And he goes, well, it happened when I was 41 years old. I had triple bypass surgery, and I lost my wife and my kids to divorce. And after that, I decided this is not the way that I wanted to continue to live my life. 
And so I changed. I made up my mind I was going to change. I don't want to live this way anymore. Friends, that's exactly what John Wesley did after that experience on that ship on the way to America. It took a long time, but it changed him, and he changed the world. The truth is, we will never feel fully secure in the outer world until we make peace within ourselves. This is where the grace of God comes in. This is where forgiveness comes into play. This is where reconciliation comes in. This is where our faith begins to grow. And we are good to others. And we are good at what we do. And we are good to ourselves. And friends, what is that? That's living the good life. That's living the good life. Because we have this inner security, this inner peace from this heartfelt relationship with the living God. It's a beautiful thing. With God's help, we can leave behind the barriers to inner peace. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. A lady named Linda Sledge recalls a day from her childhood that she would never forget. She had gone with her parents to the beach. It was a beautiful day. She was very small, very young, and, and there she was playing right where the waves would roll up to the shore, and she went out a little bit further, and, and then a big wave came up, and it knocked her down, and from her perspective, all she could see was ocean, and she tried to get up, but she was so small, and, and, and as the waves went out, she just never could gain her balance, and, and, and she became terrified, and she said, all of a sudden, I'll never forget this. As long as I live, I felt two strong arms pick me up and bring me back to safety. And her dad said, don't be afraid. I've been watching you all the time. There's absolutely nothing to fear. And I'd like to think, brothers and sisters, that those are the words of Christ to us as we search for security in troubled times. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this gift of deep peace that you offer us. Help us to trust you and to walk with you daily, and allow our hearts not to be troubled nor afraid. Amen. Well, our closing hymn is My Hope is Built, and uh, let's all stand if you want and uh, sing together now. Adam will be leading us. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet, sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is 
is our benediction for the day. Now may our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be near you to defend you, within you to refresh you, around you to preserve you, before you to guide you, behind you to forgive you, above you to bless you, who lives and reigns with God the Father Almighty and the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace.